Welcome back to the bench. So, a couple of videos ago I mentioned that uh, I had a toy coming. And that's exactly what this is. A toy. Uh, but there's a couple of, uh, couple of provisos, quid pro quos. Uh, the toy that I ordered and the toy that I received are not the same thing. Uh, what I was looking for was essentially a, a small uh, portable oscilloscope. And I had been kind of looking at these hand tech, uh, the, some hand tech uh, handheld oscilloscopes that, that seem to be multifunction. Uh, um, you know, a, a, an oscilloscope with a DMM with an arbitrary waveform generator. So it can't go wrong with all that. And at the uh, uh, bottom bottom dollar prices coming out of, of Shenzhen, uh, you know it had to be something good so what I had zeroed in on was something uh, and I believe the model number right off the top of my head was a uh, let's say a 4D uh, 42 uh, and it, what they shipped instead was a 2C 42 which is a 40 uh, 40 megahertz band with a handheld oscilloscope uh, that is also a DMM and also uh, is not an arbitrary waveform generator, even though it does have the button. So that was the video we were supposed to shoot, but unfortunately, uh, we got this one. So uh, without any further ado, this is what we got. You can see. Well, let's just take us a, a second to to just appreciate the fine craftsmanship coming out of Shenzhen. It's actually pretty nice. Uh, this feels like it's got some cardboard underneath it, but uh, a little nylon cover uh, case. Uh, and, and this has already been used. I've already been playing with it a little bit because I don't buy tools to, to you know, uh, sit around and collect dust. Although sometimes they do collect dust, uh, mostly there to work. So uh, this is essentially what you get. This is the main unit. The, uh, there it is, Handtech 2C42. And I wanted, I think I wanted, it might be a, a 2D, f no, yeah, I'm not sure, probably, let's go with 2D, 4-2. And then there's also a 2D, 7-2, which is essentially the same thing, it just has a, a, a 70 megahertz bandwidth. And again, most of the stuff I do is in the audio range, um, you know, or, or I'd also thought, you know, this could also be something that you can do a little diagnostic work on some vehicles, and it would be nice to have a, another DMM, you, you can never have enough multimeters, uh, at least that's my own opinion. Let's see if we can get some of the dust off of this. So, the issues with this one is it does not have the arbitrary waveform generator, which, if you can see right there, that button actually says AWG. And when you press it, you do not get an AWG. So I'll just turn it on, see how long it takes to boot up. And uh, it's already set, it's already in the DMM mode. Boots up pretty quick. And then, uh, it's it's got directions, a little bit of Chinglish, uh, but but uh, you know not too hard to figure out. Uh, excuse me, it didn't have directions, uh, but there were some some general directions online. They're just the only uh, directions that came with it were for the oscilloscope probe, which are just standard. Uh, you, you you get one with this package, um, but but it's not too hard to figure out. Uh, you, you can kind of wander your way through it. So this is our uh, our uh, our DMM. Uh, main screen and then you have the choice of doing the, the DC voltage or ohm you you have a buzzer a continuity buzzer I believe. Um, and then we have f uh, this is this is screen one of four so if you just press the F4 button it'll cycle you through you know, DC amps DC milliamps DC millivolts then we can go over here and uh, we've got AC volts AC amps AC milliamps and uh, of course we have diode mode and capacitance mode so uh, this video we're not really going to get into uh, you know, how accurate it is or isn't uh, only because I just haven't had time to test that uh, I did test it in DC uh, voltage mode and it was right up there with my uh, my other multimeters so couldn't really complain too much about that um, and then the scope function is pretty cool um, worry too much about that right there uh, I checked it against my my Tektronix uh, uh, ran the same wave uh, out of my uh, waveform generator. You know, the, the one on my bench because this one doesn't have it. Um, 
and and it it was a it was a pretty good representation, uh, and and it, it it's uh, it's pretty functional. Uh, you can just kind of hit the auto, uh, and you'll you'll get a pretty good waveform. Or you know you can you can uh, zig, you, you can set your triggers on here. Uh, what I it, it's there's a lot of button pushing. You know with the oscilloscope in front of you uh, on your bench, you can just kind of you know move a knob or, or hit a lever or you know press one button. And with this thing, you got to you know, press a button and then cycle through a bunch of different buttons, and it's a little, it's kind of a, a little pain in the butt. But it gives you the pertinent information. You know, for channel one, it's two channels. It's got channel one, uh, which you can enable or disable, and you have your AC coupling or DC coupling, uh, ground, um, and then you can come over here and uh, you can put your probe in uh, a one by ten by or, or uh, <laughs> one hundred by and one thousand by. Um, you know, and so it, it gives you uh, actually quite a bit of options, uh, which is which is I was fairly impressed. This this particular one was one hundred and fifteen dollars, um, and but it did come from uh, again China on a very slow boat. So, uh, and of course I was all excited to see the uh, the waveform generator, and I pressed the button, and this model has no AWG. Well, awesome. That is awesome sauce. But it is uh, it is pretty pretty functional, uh, especially like I said for 115 bucks. If you're gonna have a portable oscilloscope that that has some other functions on it and comes with a case and it's got uh, you, know, you got some extra stuff here. I'm gonna shut this off right now. You got some extra stuff here. We've got uh, there's our oscilloscope probe. I was just playing with this a little bit ago. We've got our oscilloscope probe. It's a, and it's a pretty standard probe. You know. Um, and, and it does have the detachable, uh, well, I thought it had the detachable, yep, there we go. It's got the, uh, detachable probe end right there, and of course you can use your hook, uh, and it does, you, uh, it does have a compensation adjustment on it, uh, and there's your 1 by and your 10 by. so basically we've got a 10 by probe. Let's see, what else did it send? Um... The charger cord. It did not come with a U.S. charger cord. It came with a Chinese charger cord, or excuse me, not charger cord, but the charger adapter is the uh, Chinese residential edition, I guess. But it's the uh, C-type, uh, the uh, the the C-type charger cord, USB charger cord, um, which I don't actually have a lot of equipment that has this. Most of my stuff uses the uh, micro USB. Uh, type charger cords, but that's okay. We get a few of those. So, and let's see. It also comes with some pretty, <laughs> pretty mediocre, uh, yet kind of nice uh, uh, line probes here, which have the, uh, as I like to call them, the busted condom tip. Uh, you know, you've got the protrusion of the tip coming out there, but then you can also pop it off and have a little bit more more space but uh, I like that I don't like it when they're just the solid you know all encased in plastic you can't do the, you know this this makes it nice because uh, then I won't lose them uh, but it, they do have that kind of a uh, soft rubbery silicone -y. Um, you know they're not the real hard I guess that's probably vinyl uh, vinylish kind of or, or uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not good with words, especially this morning. But but this is kind of like intermediate. They're not super soft, but they they're not real hard. So it kind of looks like there's a little bit of a sheen, but they're not this shiny uh, kind of rubber that you get with a lot of the uh, the standard probes. Um, so I'll go ahead and tuck this back in like that. So they give you a fairly decent set of probes with it, and then they give you this split. Um, set of gator clips into a shielded uh, coax with the BNC connector on the end so that's pretty handy now these these are definitely that harder that that hard less much less flexible wire um, which you know that's fine it is what it is so no complaints really uh, as far as is actual complaints so far uh, it did take a long time to get there the particular seller which you know uh, misrepresented their their ad uh, by 
editing the date after the purchase by a solid uh, three weeks. So it was originally supposed to get here on February 7th. It didn't show up until February 20, 27th or 28th, I think. I, I don't recall, but it was, it, was, it was almost the end of the month of February. So, so it was a little late getting here. Uh, and then in addition to that, the original ad, which is why I bought it, was because it was a fairly cheap version. Uh, but it, it did label it as the uh, the the 2D 42, which the 2D 72 would have been nice. But I just you know for for not knowing what I was getting, this is basically I did this for a few reasons. One, I wanted something that had uh, some kind of a scope just to use as a backup uh, in case something you know so the the scopes that are in the slab are, are a little antiquated. If one of them goes down and I just need to see a signal, just something that simple that could that could literally give me a really bad day. Um, and then I could th I thought of a lot of things on, on you know, I, I do my own maintenance on my cars a lot. Um, and I was just thinking just little things like being able to see, you know, a 5-volt reference signal or, you know, that kind of stuff. It, you know, seeing if a signal was coming from a crank sensor, you know, or from a certain module. You know, everything's all, um, uh, you know, it's all digital sensors now. It's not like it was back in the day when it was just a carburetor or, you know, something simple. It just ridiculous amounts of sensors so uh, you know and you want to make sure you're getting a signal and sometimes that's just a on off voltage it you know looks an awful lot like a square wave so uh, so that's what this entire purchase was for and then the other thing was I, when I tried to do some of the uh, uh, you know background kind of stuff that I would normally do um, before I make a purchase like this uh, you know 115 bucks is, is a lot and it's not that much. I mean, when you compare it to other tools that that are on a typical bench, you know, $115 isn't that bad. Um, but you know, look a little, <laughs> you know, look at look at some of the DO, DSO type uh, scopes that you can get for $20 or $30 on eBay or, or BangGood or or whatever. You know, they're just it's it's nothing more than a circuit board with an LCD panel on the front. And and you know, this is just a little bit beefier than that. So uh, taking a quick look at the back. And, and again, we're not going to get into really accuracy or anything. I did check it out for function. It, it works just fine. Um, I, I just don't want to make this video long enough to slap in a waveform generator. And this is not going to be the last video on this one. Um, I th it's got one of these things that you have to uh, pop like that. Um, it, pretty stable. Not too bad. Not too shabby. Uh, when they shipped it, it was brand new, and, and it had a mar right in the screen, like right in front, uh, because something was poking it through the protective plastic. So, uh, oh, I cleaned that screen off a little bit already. Um, but but I checked it for function, to, like I said, with DC and, and with Ohm's resistance measurements against uh, my other equipment. And it was, it, was, uh, it was pretty much dead on with that. Uh, but I did notice it seemed like there was an issue with the... Uh, frequency uh, counter uh, on this which I didn't verify with my frequency counter but it was a little bit off from my Tektronics uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take another look at that but I don't want to say it's not accurate before I know that my stuff uh, was not uh, acting up or wasn't set correctly so um, that, no, excuse me. The frequency was dead on. It was the peak-to-peak -peak measurement. That's what it, the peak-to-peak -peak measurement seemed like. It was off by about a half a volt. So, uh, but I'll have to redo. Uh, I'll have to redo my setup. I actually already set, shot a couple of videos when this thing came in, and they, for one reason or another, were uh, battery ran out once. Uh, um, uh, too much uh, memory uh, had been used up on uh, the other one. So those never made it so this is just kind of where we're at right now so I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna shoot two videos and this is just kind of a familiarization and I get a look at it oh uh, the charger port on the side <laughs> here's another thing this one uh, while it clearly says the SD card uh, slot is located in here uh, there is no SD card reader in there it's just hollow plastic so it looks like they just took the same body for all the models and and uh, uh, basically, you're getting a stripped-down version with the 2C42 um, and, and the uh, 2D42 and 2D72 have have more features. And, and like I said, that really drives me nuts. They actually have the button for the AWG. It's completely, completely unusable. So 
it's uh, you know pretty much looking like a category two. Uh, yeah, as far as the um, the uh, multimeter portion of it is concerned, um, you know you have your uh, standard COM port, amps and milliamps, and then your your um, your voltage ohms. And of course, uh, every meter I have, uh, this is going to be tapered. I don't do a lot of uh, amperage, uh, but you know. And I'm curious to see is what kind of <laughs> what kind of fuse they have in here. Uh, you know, I'm reading this, and it says a uh, 10 amp max, unfused. Well, but then 200 milliamps max fused. I, are we supposed to be providing our own fuses? I, I don't. I guess I don't understand that. If you look at you know almost any other multimeter, let's just take this cheapo, you know, uh, uh, like this and. Now let's just go ahead and pull these out and make it a little easier to read. And, uh, you know, right there, um, it fused 10 amps. Um, you know, and you can, one, one could assume, uh, you know, well, of course, it's only got three, uh, three ports, so maybe I've got that bass backwards. Who knows? Uh, all I know is I, I want to see some fuses in there, and I'm very curious to see whether they're using a glass fuse or whether they're using a ceramic fuse. Um, and and another thing is, uh, let me see if I can shake this behind the camera. So, something is not attached, and it's inside the body. You can hear it, and I'm really hoping it's a piece of plastic and not a solder ball. Uh, because I would really hate to turn this thing on and have it go. So I think in the next video I'm actually going to do a teardown and uh, pop this thing apart. Uh, but I'm not going to have time to do that today. So that will be out in the next few days. Um, and also uh, I think we'll probably do some, some maybe comparison uh, measurements with the, uh, with the other scopes and the other uh, uh, multimeters. Uh, and see how it compares. Um, like I said, my intention for this is general usage. Uh, you know, but but very light. You know, again, most of the stuff I look at is in the audio ranges. Um, you know, I don't need a lot of bandwidth. Um, so so something like this should, in theory, work just fine. Uh, what I've what I've used it for so far was just I just kind of ran it through the paces. I looked at the, uh, some square waves. Um, I think I went down to 200 and uh, 250 millivolts amplitude. Um, starting off with, uh, I don't know, probably 60 hertz, and I think I went all the way up to uh, my waveform generator that I keep on the bench here goes up to uh, 10 megahertz, excuse me, 11 megahertz, and uh, I ran it all the way up to to that, and this thing had had no problem keeping up with it. Um, we looked at sign uh, sine waves, we looked at uh, triangle waves, we looked at uh, square waves. And it, and it was in real time keeping up with the Tektronics, no problems. So I think overall it's going to work. Um, it, it is rechargeable. It's got pretty good battery life. I haven't had a die on me yet. I've used it a few times, and I think I lost one bar out of four. Um, but I don't recall exactly what the, um, what the overall battery time was uh, for this thing. Um, but it, like I said, rechargeable with the, with the C... Uh, uh, C style USB uh, cord, and uh, I've just been using a regular charger, so I think it's uh, five volts at uh, two amps uh, is the recommended uh, uh, adapter. So I think that's going to be it. I think we're going to wrap this one up. Um, this is the toy. We'll go ahead and play with it next time, and like I said, maybe a teardown and uh, and some comparison to how it it uh, uh, works with the other stuff. I'm not happy. It's not what I wanted. Uh, it's not what I ordered. Uh, the quality overall is you know, averagely mediocre, and the uh, um, but but I think the usefulness is you know for 115 bucks if this thing sticks around for a while you know works for a few years I think we'll probably get our money out of it. So uh, okay, well that's it for this video. Um, we'll see you in the next one, and everybody out there take care.